there's all these issues, misgendering and so on. Um, what do you make of, though, of the wider thing of, of Dylan Mulvaney, this cultural phenomenon now in America, basically sending up what it means to be a woman? I think it's absolutely appalling to give credit and, cre and, and credence to a person who's mocking women. <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney, I don't think is serious whatsoever. You got a gay man who has a, a lust oh for fame, and fortune, and what does he do? If it's being gay is not working out for you, you become trans and you try to make a lot of money, which is what Dylan Mulvaney has done. <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney is not an example of women. He's not even trying to be a woman. He walks around with a five o'clock shadow and dresses up in women's clothes and mocks women. Facts. He's berating Facts. women. I have never in my life seen a woman act like Dylan Mulvaney. Not one person on this panel can show me a woman that's as flamboyant and radical and twitching and twisting and acting like Dylan Mulvaney. Are you Mulvaney. insane? Did that's you watch the Barbie sense. movie? What are you talking about? What, You're talking about who are you to talk about who a woman is? You're a I, this is well, who, are you, who are you to talk about? I'm not telling anyone who a woman is, but I'm certainly not telling someone who isn't a woman. I've never seen a woman. Do you think Dylan like Mulvaney? You cannot compel people. <laughs> To use I'm not language telling people, you but I want people use. to be kind. I am kind. You're just I am calling, lovely. You're calling you're her kind. mentally unwell. It is mentally unwell. That's how am I nice. how, that how, very excuse unkind. Excuse me, I'm Everyone sorry. on this panel so far I, I, has had zero empathy for someone, any of the people we're discussing. You had no empathy. You, 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 you don't want to hear Riley, other people's opinions. Then, then you don't want to hear other people's opinions. Yeah, Brandon, come here. Everyone has an opinion. You may not like the opinion, yeah. which is but fine. I don't love? agree with you. Where's it the doesn't love? It's an, matter. It's a not lying. You, that's yes. your, you, you think love is lying to people and deceiving people. I think love is telling people the truth and being consistent across the board. Dylan Mulvaney is crazy. Where's the dignity? Now, let me tell you, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Where's the respect? Let's put this in perspective. Let's put this in perspective. Where's the respect? Because I think people get caught up in the, in the gender role thing. Just imagine if a person was white and decided to identify as black, and did all of these crazy We've things had, that this they argument has been had so many times. Listen, that they did stereotypically what black people would do. <laughs> we would be outraged. We would. It would be a sham. I agree. We would not accept it. And so we shouldn't do that. What Dylan Mulvaney is doing is wearing women face. Mm -hmm. The person is but, not a woman. He's not trying to be a woman. He's impersonating. I, honestly, like, I can't continue to sit here listening to this absolutely. First off, shout out to Officer Tatum. He does a great job at representing black conservatives on these panels. And I appreciate that because black conservatives really don't get that much representation. We even get ridiculed in our own communities for our perspective. So I appreciate him for going on these panels and representing us well. But he's absolutely right. What Dylan Mulvaney is doing is what we should be calling woman face. Uh, this man is getting paid $40,000 to go around the country and give speeches about how women were oppressed. Now, let me let me say that again. This man is the highest paid female speaker on women's oppression throughout history. He's getting paid $40,000 and taking opportunities that biological women should have access to. And it's, it's, it's always strange to me how black folks don't resonate with the whole woman face a little bit more because I see black women sometimes ridicule white women for even wearing braids, let alone dressing up as a, imagine if a white woman dressed up as a black woman and then started winning uh, winning awards from the AA, uh, from the NAACP. That's the equivalent. And really, that already happened. The Rachel girl that was actually a white woman that was just had a good tan and some curly hair, and she was impersonating black people, black people got offended by that. So I just don't understand how, when a man is doing the exact same thing to women, it's so appreciated by not only white folks, but also people in the black community, especially because, historically speaking, black people have been very conservative in our beliefs. Ali, I want to ask you a question because a lot of this is to do with sport and how you feel it's unfair because you're up against people with it is you know, a bigger body, right? So do you think with it's men. unfair that someone who's taller than you or has more strength than, the, than you can be in the same team? Is that the argument we're a making man. here? Is that what's unfair? I think right? it's man. to do with the crew. All right, let me, wait, let's move on. Okay. I, I want to discuss a couple of other things before we finish. One is Oprah Winfrey. We may even get some agreement on this. We might do. Um, Oprah Winfrey's fought back tears because she was basically caught taking these weight loss drugs as Zempic, I think. Um, she said it stopped her blaming herself for being unable to control her body shape with willpower. Of course, she was the front woman for Weight Watchers and had to give that up when she was caught not actually doing anything the Weight Watchers tells her to do, but basically taking a tablet to lose weight. Um, <laughs> I want to play the clip of Oprah talking about this. I took on the shame that the world gave to me. For 25 years, 
making fun of my weight was national sport. And then I read the headline that Mr. Blackwell, the tastemaker of the time, called me bumpy, lumpy, and downright dumpy. Because when I tell you how many times I have blamed myself, because you think I'm smart enough to figure this out, and then to hear all along, it's you fighting your brain. I'm afraid, I like Oprah, um, known her a bit over the years, but it was, she was caught basically defrauding the world, right? Because she was a spokeswoman for Weight Watchers, and yet quietly and secretly, and denied it, actually, she was taking one of these weight loss drugs. We think it may have been a Zempic, it was something similar if it wasn't. But she was just caught. Brandon, I mean, to me, it was the it was the deceit and the hypocrisy. And I think it's been pretty damaging to Oprah this. And no amount of her tears, uh, pretty crocodile tears, I think, no amount of that is going to change my view that on this one, she really pulled a fast one on the public. And, yeah. in, and in particular, all those women that looked up to her and were following what they thought she represented, Weight Watchers, and their guide to how you lose weight, when in fact she was popping these pills secretly behind everyone's back. This is what they do. You know, she only cried when she got caught. She didn't cry (laughs) when she was taking those Olympic pills or whatever the case may be. And then they try to change language. She says she can't change her body shape. Yeah, nobody can change your body shape, but you can change your body weight depending on what you eat. Are you in a caloric deficit or not? Are you working out or not? But she was saying she was working out, giving these young women false hope. And she did it to them. She should be ashamed of herself. But instead of taking responsibility, which I would have said, fine, you took responsibility. We know people cheat, people do stuff. She made it about her and became the victim. Lady, nobody's putting (laughs) pressure on you about your weight. That only comes from within. I don't care how much I weigh. If I don't care how much I weigh, Wait, that's on me. Mm. That didn't have nothing to do with society. So she should be ashamed of herself. But this is what celebrities do. They only cry when they get caught. So basically what Oprah did was just like what those fitness influencers do on Instagram. They edit their pictures. They take steroids. They take every shortcut they can in the world. And then they try to sell a fitness program as if the how they look is a result of the fitness program and not just editing and steroids. Uh, what Oprah did was wrong. It was it was wrong. There's no way she could try to justify it through her emotionality. How much money do you need before it's enough? She took that Weight Watchers deal knowing her responsibility was to get through with the program. And instead of that, she shortcut her responsibility by taking a pill and still continued to sell the program. If you knew you were going to fail the program and you knew that it was morally unjust for you to do that, why didn't you just drop out of the deal and, and pay them their money back? You already got enough money, but she got caught. So now she's trying to blame it on society and try to make it seem like, oh, I did this because there was a societal pressure. No, you did it because you wanted the Weight Watchers deal. You wanted the money and you sold out your audience. Let's just be honest. She sold out her audience. Um, This is just as vile to me as when they try to promote obesity in the black community via women like Lizzo. The body positivity movement is the only movement that requires no movement. And they try to use Lizzo to push the idea that your weight is helpless. You, it, you, it doesn't matter if you get on the treadmill. It doesn't matter if you eat at a caloric deficit. There's nothing you can do. Don't worry about it. You can't change your weight. So just keep eating yourself into oblivion. And then Big Pharma came out of nowhere with the pill. Isn't that convenient? So they push the idea that there's nothing you can do for yourself about your weight. And then Big Pharma says, if you just take this pill, we could cure all your problems. They did the same thing with depression. They said, if you're depressed, you're helpless. There's nothing you could do to help your own mentality. Going to the gym ain't going to help. Going to get to know your family members and getting close to your family ain't going to help. Going out and doing charitable acts to try to feel better about yourself isn't going to help. What you need is this antidepressant pill. Isn't that convenient? That's exactly what Big Pharma tries to do every time. And what people have to understand about this Ozempic stuff is... It gives you a genuine, it gives you a general disgust for food. If you if you look at food or if you eat food, it can make you throw up sometimes. So pretty much as the equivalent of in the early 90s or in the early 2000s when people used to manually take their finger and shove it in their throat and make themselves throw up after they ate food. But it's the medical version of that and now it's just accepted because what can you do about your weight except for take this pill for the rest of your life that's just gonna that's gonna make you don't get on the treadmill, take the pill. That should be the advertisement. Don't 
don't get on the treadmill, take the pill. Oprah sold out her audience and her audience should hold her accountable for that. But because she knows her audience is mostly women, she's going to try to appeal to emotionality and say I was doing it just because of the pressures of society. No, you were doing it for a paycheck. Let's be honest. Finally, I want to end with this. Uh, James Bond. Apparently, the, the person tipped to be the new James Bond is Aaron Taylor Johnson who is, uh, well, famously, he's, he's married to a director um, who is 24 years older than him. He took her name um, when they got married. He's a kale eater. I mean, all of this is ringing alarm <laughs> bells eater. to me, I must say. Um, he says, I'm being a feminist. I'm happy to say I'm a feminist. Being a feminist is just believing in equal rights. Man, woman, gay, straight, black, white, we're all in it together. Um, so we've got a kale eating guy with curly hair who took his... Wife's name. Being friends, I don't know about you, I'm just similar. not sure I can have a kale eating James Bond. Many of the Dutch eat kale, actually. It's quite to popular in, in the Netherlands. So heavily. What's wrong with someone eating I, I kale? Think, well, because it suggests they may have vegan tendencies. What's wrong with that? <laughs> can't I'm have trying a to make vegan. the point. That's what's wrong with that. They mean they're soft. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. They mean they're soft. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I believe in a man's man. I, I don't really like these feminine <laughs> I mean, guys who go kale, out. Kale they, don't, they don't seem to be. God. Men, they don't men seem too to be need fiber. In any way. They don't seem. I know it's okay to eat fiber. I'm just saying the, <laughs> the insinuation that the guy got curly hair. He looked like a softy. Yeah. And anyway. he's trying to play James Bond. There ain't no real man. Listen, even the, even the gentleman on here that calls himself gay. There is no situation so that you would find yourself himself in. Okay. What is wrong with you? I, mean, I have sympathy for the people in the comments right gay. now. They're like, what is going on? Why is this guy You know, here? we don't, don't even know, know actually. Know Brandon, to be fair, we don't you actually know whether, whether this guy is going to be James Bond. Bond. One thing we can say with absolute cast iron certainty is that Barbara Broccoli will not be appointing James Barr as the next 007. Maybe she should. Because there is a limit to what kind of man's man we want as 007, and it ain't James Barr. <laughs> Uh, thank you to my panel. Shout out to Officer Tatum again. I'll leave a link in the description to his channel down below. He does a really good job at representing black conservatives. And uh, he genuinely gives me hope and leadership in our community. I, I like guys like this, guys who are married, guys who take on responsibility, guys that go out and create their own opportunities, create their own platforms. So I'll leave a link in the description to his, uh, to his channel. Um, as far as the gay thing, uh, the, the gay, the gay LGBTQ community is just piggybacking off of the civil rights movement. And I don't understand why that doesn't offend black folks, because most of these people come from privileged backgrounds. The same people that some black folks will say are our enemies. These people come from and they want to try to claim victimality or a victimhood when they've never really been victims. You weren't redlined because you were gay. You're not getting rejected for a loan because you're gay. Full of oppression and try to sympathize with black people and relate their situation to the black situation when it's two totally different things. Oprah's absolutely wrong for slanging weight loss programs when she's not doing it. And as far as the guy that's eating vegan food and kale and everything, it's good for a diet. But uh, if that's all you're eating, you probably Probably got low testosterone let me know in the comments below if this video was a wrl and give me the hbo special that's a help brother out special hit the like and the subscribe button for more content till next time